In 2001, you guys release your major label debut, Anthology. Uh, this is a huge breakthrough for the band. Three hit singles, so you have movies, Smooth Criminal, and Attitude. What thoughts, memories, emotions come back to you now when you think back to that album that really kickstarted the, the journey you've been on since then? That whole time was so... It was it was such a crazy experience because when I think back on it now, we were being set up for this monumental moment in our lives, you know what I mean, in our career. And when we were doing it, we were so just young, you know what I mean? And and what we felt like we were older, like I was like 23 at the time. And I was like, God, when is this music career going to kick in? You know what I mean? Like, I'm just I feel like a loser, you know, struggling artist and all this and that. And um. So once Papa Roach went and like made us, made us good, you know, then um, we got to go on the record and go make this record, you know, at NRG with, with Jay Baumgartner and James Murray engineering and everybody, that whole team, you know, making that record, we walked into something that was like so special. And, and again, in hindsight, I realized what, like, I feel like we went into this like other planet, like a chamber and came out on the other side of it, just like these developed you know men like, like we just became like i don't know it's just like the difference between us before and after you know what i mean it's just like we we learned so much we we got our ideas we we got to like you know craft our art you know what i mean and really really like you know spend this time you know dedicated to all the stuff to all that practice all the times that you kind of sweated and tried hard and you know had to get up early in the morning for work you know or, or not get to work or you're hung over and didn't make work because you had a rad show had a good time and, and you didn't make work and you get fired and you're like oh this better turn into something you know what i mean all this and that i mean there, all those times you know what i mean like kind of came into fruition you know and all the all the, the practicing and doubting and you break up with your girlfriend she curses you and your shitty band and all that you know <laughs> You don't want her to be right, you know, certainly not. And and uh, when we got to go in there and go through these gates and, and do this thing and just really, really just dedicate all of our time and everybody's energy is just focused on the notes that go on this record. You know what I mean? And it was just like, wow, here we are. The ultimate goal to just do nothing but focus on your music. I mean, it was and at a level, no, no, no money mattered. Like it was just like done, you know, the, everything. You know, spare no expense, just the experience, everything, just looking, you know, around the room was awesome. Having like candles, you know, lit the whole time we're playing and just, it was just, it was unreal. You know what I mean? And um, I mean, just, I remember the smell of it, the, the everything of it, you know what I mean? It's just like, you know, and again, just the people and, and just the, the feelings and just when you kind of, when we were excited about it, because I just think, you know, it's like when your mom says, oh, you're handsome or something, you think, well, you're my mom, you know, you kind of got to think that or got to say that or something. But, you know, when you're there, you know, writing, you're pretty biased, you know, about your music. So, of course, you think it's sounding good and it's coming out good. But when other people who are unattached to it are coming in, they're going, wow, this is really good. You know, this is sounding you're like, huh, you know what I mean? Like, and so and then after it all, you know, said and done, just to realize, like, kind of what went on there and just the success that it gathered and, 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 you know, became, you know, just this cool record and, you know, to see it in Times Square lit up, you know what I mean? And all that kind of stuff. I mean, it just, to, for all that to happen and just, you know, the, the, everything that happened and, you know, making our first video and doing everything first and on that grand scale of like, you know, MTV and major label and blah, 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 and all that kind of stuff to see it, you know, it just it was so overwhelming and we were just swept away and, and the success of it and again the the team that it took to make that happen i mean it cannot it can't be go unsaid because it's just like there was such a team you know at dreamworks at that time that were responsible for you know papa roach and for us and many other artists you know nelly Furtado, like all those bands that you know all those dreamworks artists that were coming out you know at that time um, Jimmy Eat World, there was a lot. And that team was just so just on point. And, and we just learned so much about the business and that, that just everything that happens behind the scenes and all the roles that different people play and that how much goes into each step. And, and, and when, you know, later on, seeing when things aren't going right and seeing the energy and the, the lack thereof, you know what I mean, compared to when the machine is firing and just well oiled and just on point and just 
it just is like, you know, you see it night and day. And so like, you know, at the time that was our first experience, we thought, oh, this is going to be like what it's like all, all the time. Like we're just, we're made, we made it through the door, you know? And it's just like, and I wasn't fool enough, foolish enough to think that everything lasts like that either, you know, but it just felt so real and so unstoppable at that time that that team just felt like it didn't matter what you put in front of them, that like they would make it successful. And that, when that team started getting disbanded and broken up, I started to go, oh shit, like, Where's, where's our people like that? They're, they're supposed to be like family. You walk in to DreamWorks and, you know, you know everybody's like loves to see you. You're, you're like the boys are here and all this and that. And it was just such a different feeling, you know, everywhere you went, you know, it was just the whole family was just, just spread across the country throughout the, the world. You know, just there was such a red carpet everywhere. It was really cool. The album comes out. There's a number one single. The songs are everywhere. The music videos are everywhere. The album uh, sells a million copies, goes platinum in, in the U.S., here in Canada, multiple other countries. There's virtually no one will ever experience what it's like to have that moment in time that you had. Do you ever stop and think about it that you're the 0.1% success story of, of musicians, you know, millions of musicians that have this dream that, that you actually reach that pinnacle. I've always been very um, respectful of this whole, like, and, and very honored, you know, cause I, I playing music is such an honor and, and everybody that I look up to and that I admire and, and, and have like idolized, you know, that's done it before me, you know, it's, it's really important. You know what I mean? Just like, like, to me to like keep that respect you know and so like so like getting to do it all it almost feels like do i deserve it it's like an imposter kind of thing and and uh but at the same time knowing you work hard and, and all this and that so uh it, it was it was a different time i remember because when you're going to when you're going to different places we again we didn't have the internet to check in on ourselves or you know google ourselves or do whatever that you might do we had like reports from our our team from the record label and this and that and uh and so we we would be going to the next town to go conquer that town or the next country so everything behind us we had like gone and done the promotion played the shows done all that kind of stuff you know what i mean and so in our wake it was some success in there and so we were like cool that's that's rad but we didn't really get to like know about it until we were just too busy like kind of like paving the way when we came back around, came back home, then we finally could see like, oh, okay. Like, like, so, so we didn't really like feel any of it or like when it was all going on and, and, uh, like we'd be on like much music. Well, nobody, you know, in Riverside knows what much music is. You know what I mean? So it's like, it's just like all those kinds of things. It was like territorial. So we were just like going and conquering, 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 trying to do that. So at the time, like we didn't really know what was going on or, or anything like i said we just knew that that we had a strong team behind us and all those things that you said that had that became like a, a result of it all was again just all those people doing all that work and us just like head down go to the next city work go to the next city work you know what i mean and it was it was cool we were having a good time we're just we love playing music the one hard part about it all was that the disenchantment was that you know as you get there and you do all this stuff and it's a lot of like tv and a lot of this a lot of like like just press and this we're like, man, when do we get to play our music, our instruments? You know what I mean? Like we're starting to lose with, with success, that amount of success, that level, it becomes like the last thing you do is play music. It seems like, hmm. so we started getting like a little frustrated. So I was like, when do we get to play music? When are we going to play music? You know. So we have a fan question sent in from Angus Thompson. Here's the question. Who were your musical influences when writing anthology side note? Love the bass line in the song Courage. God damn. So that's from Angus. <laughs> yeah, that was cool. Thanks, Angus. You know, we were all influenced a lot at the time. We were really into Weezer. We were really into Sade. We were really into Steely Dan. We were really into Sting. We were really into Harry Connick Jr. We were really into Ben Folds 5. We were really into Bad Brains. See, we had we had at the moment that's that's kind of like what we were into while we we're recording it. That's those were the things that we were listening to a lot. I do remember because I um Sade um Lovers Rock had just come out. But um, but yeah, that that's what we were listening to when we were when we were doing that. 